Well, hello and welcome to Straight Talk on Mining, the webcast series. I may be making forward statements, so be forewarned. So how do these things form? Well, this is a very, very interesting tale. Uh, and I'm showing here a picture of the Wairaki geothermal plant. And you can see live steam coming out of the ground here. It's been captured in pipes and is being used to produce electricity. And this is in the North Island of New Zealand. Uh, now, a very uh, interesting thing here. Um, now, the, the, the steam is harvested, if you like. It's, uh, it's captured by uh, with geothermal wells, vertical wells that go down. And you can see down to a depth of maybe 300 to 700 meter, uh, meters in depth. And then uh, the, uh, it's actually hot water that has uh, carbon dioxide and other gases dissolved in it. And it comes up, 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 up the pipe. And then it comes through what's called a back pressure plate. And the back pressure plate is like a throttle plate. And this is where the steam will separate out from the hot water. And then it goes on to a separator here and it's, it generates the electricity. And then it goes on to wastewater and it's just discharged eventually when it's cooled down into the river system. And this is a perfectly natural thing. This has been going on for millions and millions of years, but here humans are capturing it. This back pressure plate is very interesting because when these things were first built, they started to realize that the back pressure plate was uh, getting a scale on it, kind of like um, the uh, scale you get inside of hot water pipes, uh, domestic hot water pipes, in areas where uh, you have hard water. But this is a little bit different because the scale actually contained gold and silver and incredible amounts of gold. And here, I'm sorry, it's a little bit out of focus because I pulled this off the web, but this is uh, a back pressure plate and they cut it up with a diamond saw. They cut it up and analyzed it and it, and it contained the scale on it, 5% gold, 30% silver. Isn't that incredible? So this is coming naturally out of the hot water that is coming from depth. This is very, very important. So we understand now uh, this is kind of the smoking gun. It tells us that this is how these things actually um, develop naturally. And uh, a lot of geysers, a lot of hot spring systems, we suspect have gold and silver deposits forming a depth beneath them today. So the heat engine which drives water circulation volcanic hot spring systems is molten lava. But lava, when it's under the ground, we call it magma. It's just lava that didn't quite make it to the surface to flow. And it's down there somewhere, maybe one or two kilometers down, just sitting and slowly cooling. In some cases, the gold and silver come from vapor and salt and sulfur rich water coming off the buried magma. It just comes out. In other cases, the buried magma sets up an underground convection cell and rainwater, which seeps into the ground vertically down, is heated at depth and then driven back up to the surface and forms a convection cell. And it recirculates like this. And it can leach away minute amounts of gold and silver from the rocks and redeposit them elsewhere into veins. And a vein is just basically a fracture or a fault that gets infilled with things like quartz and calcite and sometimes gold, sometimes silver, silver minerals anyway. Most deposits seem to have formed through a combination of contributions from recirculating rainwater and from the cooling magma body. So we're at the end of this module again, and here's our little guy. The pilgrim deploreth his habits. Dear, oh dear. And other patches too he wore, which on his garments hung, and two were on that ill-starred spot where, his, where mothers smite their young. His hat a shining co-star once was broken now and dim, and wild his bearded features gleamed beneath the tattered rim. Well, I've had uh, hair, a couple of haircuts. Uh, lockdown's not too bad here, so... 
But before that, certainly I, I look pretty wild and, and bearded. Anyway, so we'll move on.